is electrolysis. No, not the thing that removes the hair on your chinny chin chin. It's the thing that might help cars run. Hey guys, Julia here for D News. At its most basic level, electrolysis is the splitting of water into hydrogen and oxygen by an electric current. Usually this current is created by placing two electrodes in the water. Typically, these electrodes are made of different metals, so one acts as an anode and the other as a cathode. The cathode is where the electric current flows from, and the anode is where it flows to. One is considered positive, while the other is negative. If you've ever taken a chemistry class, you might know that water is H2O, which means it's made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen. But these atoms are covalently bonded, which means they share electrons. When electricity splits that bond, oxygen gets a little sneaky and steals an electron from the hydrogen in the process. So then these molecules become charged and become attracted by either the cathode or the anode. Despite what Hollywood would have you believe, pure water is a pretty poor conductor of electricity. So usually an electrolyte is added to the water like lithium or sodium. Electrolytes have more ions that allow the electrical energy to move through them. When water is broken up, the oxygen might bind with things like the sodium, but the hydrogen bonds with itself and forms a hydrogen gas. But why would you do this? What's the point besides having fun in chemistry class? Well, to fuel things. It's a pretty combustible element, so it could be a great fuel source. Have you heard of hydrogen fuel cells? Well, where do you think they get that hydrogen from? Hydrogen is in a lot of things. It's everywhere. Like 75% of mass in the universe is hydrogen. That's a lot. But hydrogen is kind of a little frisky molecule. It likes binding with other molecules. So if you want to get hydrogen by itself, you got to be like a little homewrecker and get all up in that and break it up. Sometimes by using electricity. Once you break up water, you can store that hydrogen and later use it as fuel. Michael Faraday first discovered the phenomenon of electrolysis back in 1834. So why hasn't it been like a thing in the past century? It's those dang electrodes. A lot of materials corrode as soon as the current is applied, so they don't really last in the long term. So you want an anode material that is resistant to damage from oxidation and a cathode material that is resistant to damage from reduction, but both need to be capable of the appropriate reaction. Luckily, scientists are working on it. In one study published in the journal Advanced Materials, they used a cobalt coating that worked for both. The researchers found that it's cheaper than other materials and maybe even scalable. They think it could even be scaled up to a huge industrial size. I mean, imagine whole towns being powered by it. Besides powering towns, electrolysis could power robots. I mean, NASA might use it to power a giant robotic eel that could swim the oceans of Jupiter's moon Europa. Crazy, right? It looks like a cross between a squid and an eel with large tentacles that could be used for both energy production and for moving around. It could use energy both from Europa's magnetic field and from the frigid waters of Europa. I'm not kidding. NASA funded the design as part of their Innovative Advanced Concepts program. It's epic and awesome. Check it out. There's a link in the description below. So it seems like this technology is well on its way to becoming a huge thing. Which is great, because it could be a key to a greener tomorrow. On that note, Toyota is fueling the future with a new Toyota Mirai. Using the most abundant element in the universe, hydrogen, the new Mirai is looking to the future with sustainability in mind. To learn more about how hydrogen fuel cells could power our cars and homes, Trace will tell you all about it in this great episode right here. You've probably heard of hydrogen fuel cells. They've been around for a while. They were first invented in 1839. They use oxygen and hydrogen to power a car with no moving parts and only emit clean water vapor and heat when burned. So a giant robotic eel on Jupiter's moon? Yeah, super cool, right? Tell us your thoughts down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep coming back here. We've got new episodes every day of the week.